Thank you for joining me today. I'm in Acts chapter 12 in the New Testament. This particular uh, chapter really focuses, there are, there are several different incidents there, but they all focus upon the king at that particular time, a man by the name of Herod. Now, in reality, Herod was only a puppet king. He had a limited amount of power. He was a puppet of the Roman government at that time. But they relied on him to keep the peace, and uh, and so he tried to do that. But he was very much inflated in the in the sense of his ego was puffed up, and he believed that he was something of uh, of significance in that particular world. He wasn't, but he thought he was. And so when uh, he saw that it would please the Jews, he had one of the apostles put to death. This was James, the brother of John. And uh, you remember that Jesus had called James and John the sons of thunder. And James was the first of, uh, the, first of the apostles to be put to death. Of course, Stephen had been martyred earlier than that. But when, it, when Herod saw that it pleased the Jews to do that, he was going to do the same to Peter also. And so he put Peter in prison and was, was set to execute him. And you remember the story of how Peter was there in prison and the uh, angel came and, and released him and led him out. And the uh, tale is almost humorous where he goes to the, uh, to the meeting of the church who are busy praying and uh, the servant girl comes to the door when Peter knocks and doesn't really believe that it's Peter, thinks that it's his ghost. And uh, finally, he uh, makes it known that it really is him. And then he goes and, and, and hides for a while until the danger is past. And we, we read that and, and that particular story grabs our attention. But what we fail to understand is that it is Herod who put him in prison because Herod wants to make political points with the Jewish people at that time. Now, it, it's also uh, a story that describes the cruelty of this politician, because when, the, when Peter escapes, those guards that were outside the jail were executed because they let him escape, even though uh, they were powerless against the angel of the Lord, or the angel that God sent. So, so here, this particular man, Herod, gets, his, gets, uh, gets himself high and mighty over what he had done to James, and what he almost did to Peter. And then, and then he was angry with some other people in Tyre and Sidon, apparently, at the end of chapter 12. And so he, uh, he comes and he starts speaking to them and, and the people need to or feel like they need to, uh, to assuage him and stroke him in the right way so they call him a god. And he doesn't refute that, but he accepts their accolades and immediately the Lord strikes him a very, a very painful uh, kind of death as you will read there at the end of chapter 12. Well, what's the theme of it all? The theme is the pride of, of Herod. The fact that here is a man who was in political office who saw that as his supreme end, and he didn't think that anybody could stand up against him. But the reality is that he was confronted with the power of the God of Israel. And the God that raised Jesus from the dead took him out and he will do that for those in political office today who don't acknowledge him. And we have those in our day as well. We have those at various different levels. In fact, uh, you could find them at all levels in various different places. But, but the reality is that they will one day bow the knee to Jesus. And if they choose not to, their judgment will be even greater than those who have been their, um, uh, their, their acolytes who just simply do their bidding. And so we, we need to recognize that the God of Israel is still the one who is enthroned. The things that are going on in our world today are, are, are not beyond the, 
the power of, of the God of Israel to take care of them. And so it's important that we recognize the, the, the power that he has and that we give him allegiance. Sometimes in our worship services, we sing the, a, a newer song that says there is a higher throne than all the world has known. And indeed there is. And that higher throne is the throne of Jesus and the throne of God Almighty who sits there and will one day be the judge of all mankind. Father, I thank you that you are the one who judges us and you will judge us as you choose. We thank you that, uh, that, that your judgment is righteous and just and true. And we ask that your spirit would grant to us the grace to submit to you. We pray for those who are in political office, that they too would submit to you. And for those who refuse, Father, we pray you would destroy them. Do it in such a way that they'll know before it's too late that they must bow to the one who is King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day now.